Hello friends and welcome into the Cowboys Report presented today by Manscaped. If you haven't already heard, you can get 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code COWBOYS at manscaped.com. They're today's presenting sponsor as we take a look at some potential cut candidates around the Dallas Cowboys. Now most of these names will probably get cut closer to roster cut down time, but I wanted to just preview some of these names here. We're going in order of most cap savings to least. Beginning with Anthony Brown. Now, his release would save $2.5 million now that we are past the June 1st deadline. Now, the Cowboys would actually save four point two five million if they could find a trade partner, which I think would unquestionably be their first preference for every single name on this list. As a number three, or maybe more ideally, a number four corner, Anthony Brown's not that bad. Frankly, for where he was drafted, he's actually been a pretty good draft pick. Unfortunately, he was not great in 2020. Now, part of that is just the way this Cowboys defense was. There were like three or four players in total who actually played well. Anthony Brown was not among them in the end. But as a depth piece, someone who can play both inside and out, there is value there. If Kelvin Joseph comes along quickly and the Cowboys think he's ready to go for week one, maybe cutting Anthony Brown or trading him starts to make a little bit more sense. So what would you do with Anthony Brown? I think I know how most of your votes will come, but get him in the comments anyway. Type T for trade, K for keep, or type in C for cut. Now, if the Cowboys feel good about their cornerback room, maybe a trade or cut makes more sense. Right this second, though, kind of wonder if the keep is the favorite as we sit. Let's go now to Cedric Wilson, the early favorite, make no mistake about it, to be the number four wide receiver. The Cowboys gave him the restricted free agency tender. It's not guaranteed. The Cowboys, much like they did with Antoine Woods, would save $2.18 million with no dead money whatsoever if they were to cut Wilson. And that's at least worth mentioning given the way Stephen Jones likes to operate. Now, in 2020, Wilson, who I would argue was a bit more productive when, you know, Dak Prescott was his quarterback, 17 grabs, 189 yards, two scores, couple trick plays in there as well. Look, there's very clearly a drop-off on this organization, within this organization, at wide receiver. One, two, three are awesome. Cooper, Gallup, Lamb, and honestly, whatever order you want. Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown, who teaser we'll talk about later on, and I'll throw in Simi Fehoko as well, are all in that conversation as wide receiver four through six. Could they carry all six? Yes, and Cedric Wilson's punt return value does help him out. He does handle those easy, mostly fair catch punts, and then they bring CeeDee Lamb in for what I call more high-leverage situations. So because of that, I'm not saying it's a guarantee that Wilson ends up getting cut. So what I want you guys to do right now is if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and let me know what player you want the Dallas Cowboys to come. Look at the realistic ones, but I guess it could be any player. Carlos Watkins, next up here. His release would save just under $1.34 million. Now, there's only about 400 k in dead money with Carlos Watkins. For comparison here, Brett Urban... He's almost a roster lock unless he shows up at Dontari Poe's weight. He, he, you cutting him saves you $0. So Neville Gallimore, not going anywhere. Oso Odigizua, not going anywhere. Brett Urban, roster lock. I would say Tristan Hill is not maybe not quite a lock, but in a pretty good spot. We'll get to him as well, by the way, folks. Carlos Watkins, Quinn Bahana. Do they go six deep on the defensive line? I think Quentin Bahana might make it before Watkins. So of the three guys we've talked about so far, keep an eye out for Watkins getting cut at roster cutdown time. Another free agent addition, Ty Inseki, signed this offseason from the Bills, has bounced around the NFL as a older but still decent enough option at swing tackle. Now his release would save $1.25 million. And right now for the Cowboys... 
There's a log jam on the offensive line. Tyron Smith, Lael Collins, Josh Ball, Brandon Knight, Ty Insecki, Terrence Steele, Mitch Hyatt, Eric Smith are all technically tackles. I put I put Hyatt and Smith at guard, and Isaac Olerkron, Brandon Knight are also getting work at guard. The Cowboys right now on their roster have five guys plus a fourth-round rookie in Josh Ball who they have started in the past. That's too many tackles. You're not going to carry six. There's just no way, even if you include Brandon Knight as more of a guard, that's still getting a little bit heavy there in the end. Now, you could make it work, but it's a lot. So with the savings here for Ty Insecki, specifically if the Cowboys like what they see out of Josh Ball, I think he might be on the roster bubble at the end of camp and into the preseason. Now, I hope that everyone here, but I know it's not the case, has their notification set to all. When you first subscribe to the Cowboys Report, the way YouTube works, when you hit that bell, it sets your notifications to personalized, which means you miss out on videos from us here at the Cowboys Report. You don't get every single video sent right to your phone. So go check right now. Go to the channel, click the bell button, make sure it is set to all as opposed to personalized. That way, you don't miss any video here at the Dallas Cowboys Report. All right, to C.J. Goodwin now, who I don't want to cut. I want to make that clear here. But his release would save about $1.2 million. He does not offer much on defense. But he is one of the Cowboys' best special teams players. So unless someone like uh, Maurice Kennedy, who we'll get to, a you know Reggie Robinson, somebody else really impresses, I don't think the Cowboys would want to cut Goodwin quite that fast. There's not that much savings, 400 k in dead money with his $1.2 million savings, not a part of that. In the end, I would rather keep C.J. Goodwin. I also hope everyone out there has the new Lawnmower 4.0, the number one men's grooming tool out there. Get 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code COWBOYS right there at the bottom of your screen at checkout. So we will put that link and that promo code in the comment section. That way you don't miss out on anything. Manscaped.com, that promo code is COWBOYS. Not just the Lawnmower 4.0, by the way. They've got a ton of other great men's grooming products. Pro tip, I love the shears. Best nail trimmers I've ever owned. Manscaped.com, promo code COWBOYS. Now for a name I think most of us will agree with, Darian Thompson. Remember when the Cowboys played Darian Thompson over Donovan Wilson, forever losing any, you know, benefit of the doubt when it comes to who they played in the, on defense there? Thompson is not someone you actually want playing. And the possibility of saving just under $1.19 million with hundred grand in dead money total? Move on, man. Let Jerron curse Israel Mukwamu be your safeties. Go sign somebody else off the off the, the roster off the free market for for free. Like uh, Darian Thompson is not that good of a player. If he's your safety four, never playing, okay. But why are you paying anything more than the vet minimum for that guy? He was bad last year. Like once the team moved to Donovan Wilson, defense played a little bit better with the savings involved there. I would cut Darian Thompson. My apologies, of course, to Darian Thompson, but hey, you know, I'm sorry. So would you cut Darian Thompson? Get your votes in for me. Type Y for yes, you would, or type in N for no, you would not. I would bet we're going to get plenty of yeses here. Let's go to Maurice Kennedy now, who if you forgot about him, that's okay. Uh, did not play last season, was a COVID opt-out, and the way his c contract was structured, which is, Basically the same still, folks. He wasn't a roster lock last season anyway. His cap savings, if cut, $1.07 million. Actually, just a little bit above that there, but we rounded to make it easier there. Much like Darian Thompson, $100K in, 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 in dead money. Like, that's not a big deal. This is a very easily cuttable player. This is somebody on the roster bubble. And the last time we saw him play 2019 actually was with both the Ravens and the New York Jets and was fine. But again, the numbers game at corner is real, folks. Trevon Diggs, Kelvin Joseph, Jordan Lewis, 
roster locks. I think, I think Nashawn Wright is also in that category. We mentioned Anthony Brown and C.J. Goodwin and Maurice Kennedy. We're not going to mention Reggie Robinson because the money isn't enough for me to really justify it there. I kind of cut it off at around 850k in savings more or less, but the numbers game does not add up. Because of that, I would not be surprised if Kennedy gets cut, again, closer to roster cutdown day. Let's discuss Tristan Hill here. Now, his dead money, a little bit significant, just under four hundred grand, but his release would save just under a million bucks. Now, I think this is, this is a long shot, but there was enough savings that I wanted to mention it. Hill was playing better in his second year. He's coming off a torn ACL, and unfortunately for him, on his third defensive coordinator and defensive line coach in his many seasons... The NFL is not a true meritocracy. That is not how it works. Money's involved, all those things. It also helps to have someone on the coaching staff who believes in you. All Pretty much those guys are gone in Dallas. So if Hill is slow to come back from his injury, or he's bad or whatever, he could, if someone could, be a roster cut candidate. Dorrance Armstrong now. It came down to Dorrance Armstrong, Bradley, and I, but Armstrong saves you ways, way more money. 920k. Now, with the way the roster numbers actually work out in terms of salary cap, you still got to have someone on the roster. You're not really going to save that much. That's why I have my cutoff point just below this figure. But he's a big enough name. He's played significant snaps. Had to mention him, right? He has not been a good pass rusher. Uh, like, yes, there's special teams value. The 3 4 outside linebacker, 4 3 defensive end hybrid role. It can drop into coverage. Yes. He's just not that good at rushing the passer, which is what I want out of an edge rusher anyway. Marcus Lawrence, Gregory, kind of, sort of, Brett Urban. Those are roster locks. Terrell Basham, Chauncey Golson, roster locks. They're not going to carry seven. The, 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 the Cowboys are not going to carry seven of the guys you see on screen. That's, that's too many players, barring injury. With Golson and Basham and Lawrence and Gregory all kind of locked in, the numbers don't really add up that well for me. Now, I, I think one of these guys, Dorrance Armstrong, or unfortunately Bradley and I get cut. I'd be surprised if all those players we mentioned made the roster. The numbers are just not there for this team, barring injury. So pick one to keep if everyone's healthy, which might have to make a decision because injuries do happen in the NFL, but pick one for me. Type DA for Dorrance Armstrong or BA for Bradley and I. The final player here on this list, that is Noah Brown, the receiver who was re-signed fairly quickly. There's not much committed to him. Again, 850k in cap savings, so he is cheap because he's only got uh, 137.5 million, or K, excuse me, 137.5,000 in dead money. Could you imagine that level of millions? Anyway. There is going to be some roster battles here for the back end of the wide receiver room. Cooper, Galp, Lamb are locks. Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown fighting for a spot. Seema Fehoko probably makes it, but we'll see. Could one of the undrafted guys, maybe a TJ Vasher, a Brandon Smith or somebody, impress so much on special teams that they give that special teams focused role to them instead of Noah Brown? It's possible. We'll know more, of course, in training camp and in the preseason.